Hi there, Booktube. It's Roz, and I'm here with a Victober TBR. I thought I'd sit myself by my um, Victorian fireplace for this video because why not? I, I live in a house that was um, built in the towards the end of the Victorian period, like a lot of Brighton, um, the city where I live. Now, today you will be able to find TBRs from all the Victober hosts. We're all putting them up at the same time. So, you know, if you can see this, you can see Kate and Katie's and Marissa's and Petra's too. Now, each Victober, I really enjoy immersing myself sort of really deep, deeply in Victorian literature. And I generally try and read pretty much nothing but Victorian literature um, during the whole month. Another of the things that I really enjoy in Victoria is seeing what other people are reading. You know, the other, um, seeing people's TBRs and what they're going to read and then what they do read and what they what they think of it. And each Victoria, I think I'm going to kind of get through some of the things I've been meaning to read for ages and, you know, get, get, a, get, a, get a bit ahead with my Victorian reading. And each Victoria, I end with an even longer list because of all the lovely things I've seen other people um, talk about. Um, I hope it's the same for you. So I've tried to plan a, a reasonably sensible um, and moderate TBR this year. And first thing on it is the group read, which is Anthony Trollope's The Way We Live Now. Now, um, we're spreading that over the whole month. If you want to see the um, schedule for that, um, because you might want to join in, and I hope you will, because it's a great book, uh, it's on everybody's announcement video, but it's also on the um, a thread in the Discord server that we've set up for um, Victober. Do come and join the conversation there. There's, I don't know, 300 or so booktube people on there now enjoying talking about what they're going to read and um, what they're doing for the different challenges and so on. And I'll put the link below. You will find, yeah, threads for all five challenges there. And um I'm I'm really quite inspired by this year's five challenges. I mean, I, I always am, but you know, perhaps even more so by some of them this year. And I've got one book apart from the group read that that actually covers all five challenges. It's it's a first person narrative. It's by an author that's new to me. It has the 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 main character becomes an a, a, an outsider at one point in the story. It's an example of new woman fiction and class is a really central part to it. So uh, what is this magic book, you ask? Well, it's Jill by Amy Dillwyn. And um, it was published in 1884. And Jill tells her own story um, about leaving her kind of reasonably sort of well-off background in Wales and moving to London and finding sort of independence by working as a ladies maid so in a kind of working class job and um it sounds really intriguing even more intriguing i think is 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 the 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 life of um amy dillwyn the author she was a novelist obviously but she was also a businesswoman and an industrialist um uh, a lesbian and a feminist in so far as you can use those words about victorian women but you know i think i think you know what i mean Absolutely fascinating. I hope to find out more about her as well as reading reading the novel. So basically, that's my TBR sorted, isn't it? Group reading, all five challenges done. Well, not really. <laughs> I couldn't just have two books, could I? I've got five other definites on my TBR. You know, things that I'm really committing that I will. I'm, I'm sure that I will read. Okay, and I'll go through those first, and then I've got a few other kind of possibilities depending on how I get on. So. First of my, um, or when I would say that all seven books that I'm reading for Victoria meet my own challenge of, of being um, about class in one way or the other. But the other books all meet sort of one or two of the other challenges. Now, the, the trickiest challenge for me this year is has been um, uh, Marissa's challenge to read um, something by an author that's new to you. So Jill by Amy Dillwyn is 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 one book for that, but I'm sort of cheating a little with the second because it's another Amy Amy Levy, and she, I've read a couple of her poems, but I'm going to read um, her novel, um, The Romance of a Shop, and I think that sort of counts because you know I've literally only read a couple of poems before. Now 
again, she's a really interesting character, I think. Um, she only lived to the age of 27, but in that time she'd had time to be um, uh, the one of the first two Jewish women to be able to study at Cambridge. Um, she'd had a passionate love affair with a fellow poet, Violet Trefusis, um, who's has a different pen name, which I've forgotten. Um, she had mixed in sort of radical circles. When she when she died, Oscar Wilde wrote an obituary for her. Sounds fascinating. I I am look. I think Romance for Shop is also going to be really good on on class as well because it's about four four sisters who decide to run a shop and how that works out for them. Now, there's an interesting connection between Amy Levy and um, the author of the, the my next TBR choice. And um, that's because when she was 13, I think she was a, a bit of an academic prodigy, really. She wrote a, a kind of like a, an, an essay about of, 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 of um, literary criticism about Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Now, um, Aurora Lee was published um, in 1856, so um, it would have been, you know, about 20 years before when um, when Amy Levy wrote this wrote, wrote her essay about it. So it was sort of new, but not new, new. And I've been reading Aurora Lee slowly over the last few months, um, along with Kate Howe, and that's because it's it's a a novel in verse, you know, a, a, a novel length poem. And I quite like taking that sort of thing slowly so that as well, I, so that I read it for the words, the poetry, as well as the story, although the story is an interesting one. So my plan is to do, to sort of finish the last sections of it in Victoria and then sort of, but also have a look sort of back through the whole to get a sense of it as a whole, and um, uh, as uh, and it definitely um, talks about class. It definitely talks about being a, a stranger or an outsider, um, and it's another first person narrative. So that's my second book for Petra's um, challenge. The other thing I would say is that it really looks at the position of women. The the the, the, the protagonist Rory Lee is sort of. St- struggling with how to maintain her emotional and financial independence so that she can be the writer that she wants to be. And so it doesn't count for Katie's new woman fiction challenge, because unlike um, uh, The Romance of the Shop and, and, and Jill by Amy Dillwyn, Dillwyn, but it, it's almost like a precursor, um, I suppose, to to the new woman. Um, yeah. The, you know, sort of where those ideas were sort of brewing 30 years before. So, normally every Victoria, I try to get in a, a, a sort of a, a novel, a major novel by a major Victorian author that I've always meant to read and, and, and haven't yet got to. And this year, that's going to be The Woodlanders by Thomas Hardy. Now, I love Thomas Hardy. He wrote quite a lot. I've read quite a lot, but there's still significant novels of his that I haven't read. And uh, I think Jen the Librarian said that The Woodlanders was her favourite Hardy. And so that's as good a recommendation as I could wish for. It's... um. A book about class again. Also, it's my next choice for the stranger or outsider prompt because Grace is a, a kind of like a country girl who then has a more sort of middle class education and um, can then comes back to her sort of home home village and realizes that she's now kind of almost a step apart from um, the Giles the woodsman who who loves her dearly and she turns her attention to an interesting newcomer, um, the sort of rather smart um, and better off or, you know, higher social class, Dr. Edred Fitzpiers. Now, knowing Hardy, this is not going to end well. We shall see. Now, a few years ago, I read my first novel by uh, another 
major Victorian novelist that I'd sort of neglected up to that point, and that's George Gissing. And I read um, New Grub Street, which is probably his best known novel. And if you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend it. But ever since then, I've been meaning to read more, and in particular, um, to read The Odd Women, um, which came out in 1893. And this Victoria is the perfect opportunity because The Odd Women is one of the books that Katie's recommended um, where a male writer is writing, um, drawing on the sort of new woman movement. And is that a contradiction in terms to read a, a, a book about new women by a man? No, I think that the, 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 I suppose what's interesting is um, that sort of... M- thoughtful, intelligent, sensitive male writers were also trying to think, you know, about the position of women and how that needed to be different and how they might need to change to accommodate that. We shall see. I I, 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 I hope I hope it turns out to be what I want. It, it, the odd women of the title are a, a series of unmarried women that he writes about and um, how they make a living and, you know, with varying degrees of, of success. So again, you know, class very much features there. Now, my last definite Victober read, I wanted to be a play because, you know, I've got some novels, I've got poetry in the shape of horror early. I love reading drama and Victorian drama is a great way into the sort of, um, or another great way into the, the Victorian psyche. And um, I haven't been reading as many plays this year as I, I had did in the, the previous couple of years because um, Tilly and I haven't been keeping up with our Discussing Drama series because she was working abroad and we had to give it a break. But I'm hoping that this one we're going to um, get to talk about and make a video about together. And it's Mrs. Warren's Proce- Profession, not Procession, Profession, by George Bernard Shaw. Now, why have I picked that one? Because, it again, it's kind of a new woman but written by a man. Um, very interesting about sort of Victorian hypocrisy about how, women's position. Um, it's also a, a class um, themed play. The, the 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 basics of the plot are that um, Vivi is a, um, a smart young new woman who's been studying um, at university, you know, she's finished that, she comes back to um, live with the the mother that she doesn't really know, you know, they've they've not been close up to this point, and um, discovers that her mother, uh, Mrs Warren, the way she is funding Vivi's life and her own life, and, you know, how she's made her fortune, is by um, running a, a string of brothels and the play is about sort of um how that pans out shall we say i've seen a bbc production of it but i've never seen i've never read the play so it's it's um it's a new one for me and i'm 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 keen keen to find out more so those are the seven things on my definite tbr and that feels sort of realistic and, and reasonably moderate, not not gone crazy there. But I do have backup plans if I find that I get a bit more time. Now, when I was thinking about things to recommend um, for people to read that, that talked about class, one that sprang to mind was um, The Diary of a Nobody by um, Jordan Whedon Grossmith. It's because it's a bit different because it's um, uh, funny, you know, it's it's humorous, it's kind of satirical, um, very much about sort of the finer class distinctions in um, in, Victor- in the Victorian, the growing Victorian middle class, and it's first person narrative as because it's kind of like a diary. So. Talking about that made me really want to revisit and reread this because it's so long since I've read it. So I'm hoping to do that. It feels really odd having a Victoria TBR that doesn't have a Dickens or a Gaskell or a Bronte on it. And I think I might have to let Dickens rest for for, for this Victoria. But if I have time... I would like to read the last of Charlotte Bronte's novels that I haven't yet read, and that's The Professor. It's, it's, it's not as long as some, so I'm, I'm, you know, cross my fingers that I will get get to this. Um, 
I I kind of thought perhaps it was a sort of second ranking um, Charlotte Bronte novel, but I've heard some positive things about it. If you've read it, tell me what you think. I um, I can't have a, um, a a completely Gaskell free Victober. So at the very least, I will read one of her short stories. Probably something from um, Gothic Tales, maybe an old nurse's tale. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But if there's enough time, I will read her novella, Cousin Phyllis, which is, um, you know, a bit of a compromise. Not as long as the novel, but but fingers crossed doable. Then finally, only reading the rest of Aurora Lee doesn't feel like enough enough Victorian poetry in, in my Victober. Last year, I read lots of poetry because that, that was my challenge to encourage people to read. Um, I think with the sort of whole new women and, and the sort of precursors of that in my mind, I think I might read um, Christina Rossetti and um, I'll see how much of her selected poems I might find my way through. I read Goblin Market um, last October and for the first time in, in Doggy's years and enjoyed it so much that, um, yeah, I'm keen to go back to Rossetti. So that is my Victober TBR. I would love to hear about yours. You could put it in the comments, but better still, join the Discord um, server and there's a whole thread with TBRs on it and, you know, a chance to see other people's plans and talk about them and, in, in, and enjoy that. So, you know, link below and um, roll on Victoria.